So here's a little story about why you need a graph database. Have a look at the diagram on the right. It shows how Bob and Alice live together in a house in Richmond. Alice and Carlos are directors of a company called Acme. Acme has a business account and Bob has a savings account. And the question is, if Carlos, as a director of Acme, transfers money from his business account to Bob's savings account, is that a related party transaction? Well, it's kind of clear from the picture that it is, and a graph database would be able to show this very easily. It would start at Carlos, and it would trace along the links down to Acme and up to Alice, through Richmond, down to Bob, and down to Bob's savings account. And you don't need to tell it where to look, it just follows the links until it finds the shortest path between Carlos and Bob. If it can get from one account to another in a relatively small number of steps, then they're probably related parties. The same is not true of a conventional database. Have a look at the tables on the left. You have a table for names and addresses, a table for accounts and a table for directorships. It's actually exactly the same information, but you have to look pretty hard at it to work that out. And finding the related party transaction is even harder because for every link on the graph on the right, you have to code a table join on the left. So in order to find out that Carlos and Alice are related, you need to be able to join the directorship table to itself on the field directorship. Similarly, to link Alice to Bob, you need to join the addresses table to itself on the field address. And to link Carlos to Bob, you'd have to join the result of the two queries above together on the, on the name field. Then you'd have to join the accounts, in the, the accounts into that mega table and filter out only the records with the source and destination accounts you're looking for. Now that's a lot of query code, and this is in the super simple case when only a few tables, very little data, and crucially, you know in advance exactly the kind of relationships you're looking for and the number of steps you're expecting to take through the graph. For example, you might also want to check if Bob and Carlos live together. They don't. Or if Bob and Carlos are both directors of Acme or another company. Or if Carlos has a savings account that transferred money to Bob and so on. If you don't know this, you'll have to code separate queries for every possible way of traversing through your information and run them all in order to see whether in any one instance there's a connection. Even if you have time to write the queries, the time to run them would be prohibitive. So it's no wonder that before graph databases came along, fraudsters and money launderers were able to move through the banking systems undetected. And there you go. One of many cases where you can do things in a graph you simply can't do with a conventional database.